G'day everyone, this is Aussie Okdok, and thank you for visiting my channel, What's Okdok? I'm a doctor from Australia, and I specialize in the field known as occupational medicine. In this video, we'll be talking about heat, which is a type of physical hazard which can be exposed to in a workplace. Global temperatures are increasing due to the effects of climate change, and WHO estimates that in 2015, 175 million people around the world were exposed to heat waves, which are three or more days of high maximal temperatures. Particularly in Australia, these types of episodes of extreme heat have greatly increased, becoming longer and hotter. If you're working in an environment where you're exposed to long periods of excessive heat, then this can be very hazardous to your health. In Australia, studies showed that in the period of 2008, 2018, there were 1,360 worker compensation claims related to working in heat. This may not seem like a large number, however, it's likely that these numbers are underreported given that the symptoms of heat stress may not be obvious. Heat stress is a very serious matter which needs to be effectively managed in the workplace. Common workplace situations which cause heat stress are working in geographical locations which traditionally have long periods of hot climate, such as those near the equator, if you are performing heavy workloads in hot conditions, working with processes which produce a lot of heat, such as welders or foundry workers who may be exposed to a lot of heat during their shift. Radiant heat from surroundings. This is common for people that work in the outdoors or have long periods of sun exposure. If your particular job requires you to wear heavy protective clothing, this could also potentially lead to generation of a lot of heat. A number of external factors determine how you are affected by heat. And this can be due to air velocity, which is the speed of the volume of air moving within an environment. Radiation, which is the exchange of energy between two surfaces that is not in contact physically. An example is the warming of the earth by the sun. Humidity, which is the concentration of water vapor in the air. This can be relative to the maximum saturation or maximal water that the air can hold. If there is a high humidity, it is often more difficult for the body to remove heat and therefore you will feel hotter. Air temperature is the measure of how hot or cold the air is. And finally, like we mentioned previously, clothing can lead to heat trapping or ineffective evaporation of sweat. There are also internal factors within your body, such as the metabolic rate, which generates heat as a result of physical activity. Even at rest, this can generate around 1,600 to 1,800 kilocals per day. Now to some basic physiology to explain how the body regulates heat. Imagine the body like a car. The body is constantly producing heat like the engine as you go about your work. The body, however, needs to be at a certain temperature range of 36.8 to 37.2 Celsius in order to function optimally. It therefore has a finely tuned system of regulating heat in order to balance heat production and heat loss. How this is done is through a part of the brain known as the hypothalamus, which you can think of as the body's thermostat. The hypothalamus works with other parts of the body, such as the skin, sweat glands, and blood vessels to remove excess heat from the body. The blood and blood vessels are like the coolant through the tubing, taking the heat from the core to the skin. The body can increase this process by increasing heart rate and increasing the diameter of the blood vessels, allowing for more blood to be delivered to the skin. And this can be seen when you get flushed of the skin on a hot day. The skin, which can be thought of as the radiator, is an important organ in managing heat. The skin includes complex mechanisms of sweat glands, smooth muscles, and hair follicles. Heat can activate the sweat glands, producing sweat which cools the skin. This is a mechanism known as evaporation, whereby heat is transferred as the fluid, i.e. sweat, 
transform into water vapour. Other mechanisms by which heat is lost or gained by the skin are radiation, where heat transfer between things that are not in physical contact. This can be from one person to another or object. Convection, where heat transfer by movement of fluid or air. And this is related to air velocity that we mentioned earlier, where increased air speed can lead to increased heat transfer. And conduction, where heat transfer comes through direct contact. Evaporation is the most effective means of regulating temperature and accounts for 98% of the cooling process. The body has the ability to cope and adapt to extended periods of heat exposure through a system called acclimatization. This includes physical changes which occur slowly in the body over a period of 7 to 14 days. You also have increased response to temperature changes in the skin, improved sweat reflex, increased fluid and electrolyte balance, and improved stability of the heart and lungs. But if this becomes excessive, or you're not acclimatized slowly, then heat can overwhelm the system. The result of this is rising body temperatures and excessive fluid loss, which is known as heat stress, which has significant detrimental effects on the body. Heat stress is when the body is unable to effectively regulate heat generated through external and internal factors leading to overall heat gain. Factors which increase the risk in workers can include the work environment, such as air temperature, humidity, and air movement, the role itself and its workload, including intensity and duration of work, the clothing worn at work, as restrictive and heavy materials can affect heat loss, and the worker themselves, including their physical fitness, whether they're over 65 of age, whether they're pregnant, overweight, those that have underlying medical conditions, are on certain medications such as diuretics, under the influence of drugs and alcohol, or those that are not acclimatized. People suffering from heat stress can have a range of acute symptoms, from mild conditions such as fatigue, cramping, and reduced work capacity, moderate conditions which can include heat exhaustion which results in fainting, headaches, reduced blood pressure and nausea and vomiting, to severe conditions such as heat stroke which can cause confusion, unconsciousness and seizures. If the body's core temperature reaches more than 40 degrees Celsius then cardiac arrest can potentially occur. Potential exposure can also result in the development of chronic effects such as worsening pre-existing conditions, particularly related to the cardiovascular system such as the heart, diabetes, the kidney, and mental health conditions. They can also increase the risk of accidents and injuries as a result of reduced alertness and fatigue. As you can see, it is critical that we are able to reduce the risk of workers developing heat-related illnesses when working in hot conditions. So how do we manage heat stress? Acutely, those with heat exhaustion or heat stroke requires immediate first aid and medical attention. The aim would be to move them to a cool environment, provide cool fluids, and loosen clothing if necessary. General advice for those working in hot conditions Maintain adequate hydration, avoid caffeine and alcohol, take regular breaks, wear loose clothing, and allow time for acclimatization. The employer can also implement controls to reduce the risk of heat-related illnesses using the framework of hierarchy of controls. The most effective would be using engineering controls. This would include installing local exhaust ventilation to remove heated air, Installing cooling equipment such as fans to allow increased air movement. Provide physical cover or shielding from radiation where work is performed. Increase the distance between workers and heat source as much as possible. Administrative controls can include scheduling work where periods of heat exposure is the lowest, 
Reduce the amount of time workers are exposed to heat. Allowing for regular breaks. Training workers to recognize the symptoms of heat stress and provide general advice as we discussed previously. And finally, personal protective equipment. Provide adequate clothing and shielding for the work environment. This could include loose clothing as well as shielding from the sun, which can include a hat, long sleeve shirt and pants, sunglasses, and sunscreen. In summary, this video we discussed about heat and its effect on work. It is important to understand what causes heat stress and how it is able to be effectively managed in the workplace. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that I provided you with some valuable information in the area of occupational medicine. I value any feedback, therefore please feel free to leave a comment on any of my videos as well as a like if you enjoyed it. If you find my content of value, please subscribe and share them with your family and colleagues. Have a good day.